Hey everybody, Dr. Rob here. I got the big thumbs up from Joanne. Let's talk about core. So many patients come in and ask so many questions about core, how to activate it. They still think uh, a lot of these type of exercises like sit-ups really work. Well, my question is, do you suffer from lower back pain? Eight out of 10 Americans suffer from lower back pain. Do you actually know how to activate your core? I don't know, so many people ask this. So number one, let me explain to you. Bracing is a critical element to core health. Bracing, not, bra I'm sorry? How do you brace? How do you brace? That's a great question. So I, they, they gave me the funniest look, so I'm happy that Facebook is raw. Bracing is a 360 degree co-contraction around your spine, your lower back, and your abdomen region because the muscles dictate that around this guy, you want a 360 degree co-contraction. It's almost like wearing your own natural belt. So whereas a lot of people just want to hollow and go like this, it's not gonna work, it's this brace. How do you do it? Well, a lot of people, I'll show you two different ways. Number one, you put your hands on your lower back. And when I put my hands on my lower back right now, you're gonna feel a softness to the turgor of your muscles. Once you bend at a hip hinge and go about 10 or 15 degrees forward, man, those muscles push into your thumbs. That's what a brace should feel like. And then I just brace in with a 360 degree cold contraction and I feel it. Better than that, I take your fingers, put them right here in your obliques and press against them like you're pushing out, like you're bearing down. And now you feel your obliques and your core engage that brace should be actually a subconscious brace. So when you have that brace, you're now able to isolate and activate all your intrinsic core muscles. So now that I've told you how to brace, let's talk about the anatomy and what's important in your core musculature. There's two types of muscles in your core. Core number one is your endurance core, your intrinsic core. They actually hold your spine in place. They hold it like your spine being like the mast of a sail ship. The other type of core muscles are dynamic. They're in this area of the spine. They enable you to move. So big takeaway about good core exercises or good functioning core is your core should never move. It's the anti-flexor. It's the anti-extender. It's the anti-rotator. It's the anti-lateral rotator. Your core isn't supposed to bend. Your lower back isn't supposed to bend. When your lower back bends like this, it breaks. Think of a credit card. If you go like this, even the new credit cards, get the new express card, even the new credit cards will break. But if you put a plastic covering like an engagement of a core and you try and bend the credit card like your spine, it won't occur. So you want to activate those endurance muscles. The problem occurs that after an injury, your brain shuts off these specific intrinsic core muscles and these dynamic muscles come to help. And that's very indicative of if someone walks in your office or somebody feels what they tell me is, I felt like my back was just giving way. If you feel like your back just gave way, it tells me your intrinsic core didn't hold. Once again, your intrinsic core is endurance muscles. They're like a marathon runner. Your dynamic muscles on the outside, which enable you to move and generate power, they're like sprinter's muscles. So when those sprinter's muscles are asked to stabilize, your back gives way. Now, flexing, I had shown you, flexing at your lumbar spine posed a problem. We're allowed 28,000 flexions in our lumbar spine. If you were to flex once a day, you will herniate your disc by age 40. So obviously we need to hold, we've got a big face from Joanne, which is great. She was like, yeah, that's great. So if you hold your lumbar spine in place with proper core activations. So what exercises should you avoid? No sit-ups, no sit-ups, no crunches, not working your core. You're actually working your neck. No leg raises. Leg raises actually are tightening on your hip flexor muscles and your psoas, no leg raises, no leg ups. Your core, the anti-mover, you should hold in place. So what are your best exercises? Front plank. Here you are in a plank and your muscles are holding. Side plank, getting the side muscles to hold. Bird dog, where you have one arm and opposite leg. So you're going like that or like that. Just a basic brace 
or what we call a rollout, where you're holding here and envision the arms moving forward. These are great core moves. The knee to chest uses your hip flexors, which is gonna damage your lower back. The bending of your lumbar spine doesn't work. If you want more core exercises, every week I got superstar personal trainer Kate. We are doing Mobility Mondays, and the next bunch of Mobility Mondays is gonna be different core exercises. Exercises on the TRX, exercises on the ground, exercise advancement. So take a look at that. We also flush those over to Instagram, Dr. Robert Silverman on Instagram. Do we have any questions, or is it just the typical ones that we had prior? Uh, no questions so far. All right, so we just had that one question about the muscles and everything, and a couple of chiropractors sent in. They knew I was going to do core. They wanted to know about the multifidi muscle. The multifidi muscle is the most intrinsic muscle in the lower back that aids with extension. So the first thing that you're going to activate is the transverse abdominis, which connects to the multifidi. But remember, you still want that 360 degree co-contractions. You wanna get the lat dorsi coming down here and you wanna get the obliques coming around here. So core activation, core exercise is critical. Anybody who hurts their lower back needs to do core activation after. If you wanna decrease your incidence of lower back, you need to do core activation. When you go to physical therapist, your chiropractor, your personal trainer, they should all give you I do it in my office, core activation exercises, and they should be done properly. Can you hold the front plank for 92 seconds? Can you hold the side plank for 74 seconds? If not, your core is not strong enough. If you want some uh, videos or you want some information, feel free to IM and DM me. We're pretty good over there. Dr. Rob, always yours in health.